Cynthia Wade, when she was making the documentary, did ask Laurel, you know, how would you feel if people had a, would want to fictionalize this? Like, is that something that hmm. you'd be willing to give the, the rights to? And she was like, as if someone would want to do that, of course, was <laughs> yeah. her response. But um, she was absolutely, I would want as many people as possible to know about our story and what, you know, the community goes through. Um, there are ways that some we have to show up sometimes in different rooms and it doesn't mean that you don't get to be your authentic self but you are aware of that and sometimes our young people don't even understand that that's even anything that they're even aware of that so I think empowering young people with that language we also introduce the concept of microaggressions we want them to understand that language to have vocabulary to understand that they have their own power to navigate the experience of having someone who has who has an intersectional identity is it's really not a fluid experience at all it's very sort of you're this or that in that particular space so you know being too gay for muslims and a bit too muslim for gays and kind of the experience of intersectionality for the people who really do exist at intersections is you're always actually a conflict with one side of yourself in every different space. Ever since Zoe transitioned, Sandy had become convinced that her daughter would develop an eating disorder, though Zoe was eating as little as ever. No thanks, Mom, Zoe said, I'm not hungry. Zoe, Sandy said, the last thing I want to do is have to make you eat. It's not like I like having this conversation. Sandy was trans too. Every time I've been attracted to a character, it's just because of who they are, and their sexuality has been um, beside the point. But that being said, it is interesting that every time I am talking about something, I end up kind of in the, in, in the middle of LGBT um, discussions and politics, and, and you can't help but evolve. You know, you have to bring up tough issues like molestation or, or bullying or LGBT awareness. Um, and letting your kids be sensitive. That's exactly why, why my kids are here today. I want them to be around the LGBT community. We should be freaked out, we should be horrified, and we should be angry, especially when we're standing in uh, the Bay Area and so many of us have LGBT people in our lives that matter to us and we care about human rights. We know that this is wrong. But it was <laughs> very revealing because her whole understanding of what it meant to be lesbian or gay or bi or trans or whatever it was, oh, it's about sex. And it taught me a really, really, really important um, lesson or it revealed something. It's all kinds of like interesting thoughts around different diverse groups and where they might agree or disagree. And I have a very different perspective on it, particularly in the last year and a half, um, as we've seen all diverse groups attacked um, equally by the administration, by parts of the media, where, you know, if you're a person with disability, somebody's picking on you, you're a person of color, LGBT, you name it, everyone seems to be under attack. And so I don't think I would be where I am now had this project not come to be because I've worked through a lot of stuff, like coming out to my my mom, um, cutting my hair, being okay with the fact that I feel a stigma towards a certain word that I now don't really anymore, which has been like a, a, a big step for me. Well, thank you for letting me be here and it is refreshing that Google thinks there are questions that it cannot answer. Uh, <laughs> that is, that, that humility it will go a long way. You've just gone through conversion therapy with a therapist. So who are you supposed to talk to about your feelings once you're done with conversion therapy? The person who was horrifyingly traumatic to you? Going into a mental health situation for me was horrible. Keeping our community, we're keeping our identity and our values intact and preserved, but the conversation shifts radically when you actually have a member of the community who shares all of those core beliefs, who cares about the community, who has relationships with people in the community, who is simply asking people to reconsider their interpretation of a select amount of texts, not to reconsider the importance of the Bible, the importance of God or their faith. The reason why I keep doing it is because when I was struggling, when I was trying to figure out who I was and I was very lost and confused, the only thing that kept me going was seeing like happy, successful trans adults or just like happy LGBT people who made it, like they survived. They managed to make it through all the trials and tribulations that me as like a depressed, suicidal teenager, like I couldn't understand, you know. I didn't see anyone that looked like me on television. I didn't, I didn't have anything to base my experiences what I was going through off of. 